All right, I want to welcome everybody and thank you for joining the webinar. Um, we're going to be offering a preview of what to expect in our Chicago Trading Workshop, which will be later in July. Um, you can ask questions at any time, and Anthony or one of us will uh, respond. And if we don't respond, we'll get to you at the conclusion. So a core theme of the workshop is peak performance. And, uh, but the question is, how do you achieve that? And I happen to believe this happens when you stretch outside your comfort zone, your, your normal ideas, you learn new ideas, you reinforce old ones, and uh, meet new people. Every other industry offers us continuing education or conference opportunities, but there's not a lot in the trading world. So it's a great way to learn, stay motivated, meet others, and uh, I'm really happy that you guys joined us for this live session to um, uh, ask questions and just kind of hear what it's all about before you make, have to make any decision. So Market Delta organized this the Chicago Trading Workshop to provide uh, a launch pad uh, of foundational concepts for novice traders uh, or anyone just looking to refre refresh the fundamentals. And that's what the day one event is. And you'll hear more about that at the end. Uh, the more advanced content, which will be days two and three, will provide fresh, organized content that will spur ideas and certainly uh, some trading edges for many of you, I suspect. And then last but not least, it's going to provide an opportunity to connect with other traders face-to-face -face, um, and uh, really help, help you build a trading community, uh, which is part of, a valuable, part of the valuable learning process. So I'm, the slides are just going to be each speaker. You're not going to see um, a PowerPoint uh, since these are kind of short bits that we're going through, guys. So going with the last point that I just said, I want to I read a quick quote from Albert Einstein. Uh, he said that what a person does on his own without being stimulated by the thoughts and experiences of others is even, in the best of cases, rather paltry and monotonous. Said another way, your potential is greater when you're surrounded with others. And that's really what we're trying to do with this. If you study the lives of successful people, you'll find that uh, most, almost every story of personal success is founded upon the help and support of others. Uh, we find many times traders are isolated and don't have that opportunity to truly learn from others and uh, just kind of work through new ideas. The most, the most transformative experiences that you'll encounter come as a result of your social interactions. Um, and that's really what we're trying to provide through this workshop. I'm sure you've all heard the quote, if you want the same results, keep doing the same thing. I'm sure you've heard that. And I bet everyone here wants to improve their trading. Who doesn't? Again, that's what this, the idea of the workshop, trying to provide a way to share ideas, learn some content, and uh, learn from others. I'm reading a book right now um, that makes the point that successful people take quick action, even though they may fail. Instead of trying to avoid mistakes and failing, they, they actively seek opportunities uh, where they may fail so that they can learn from them and adapt quickly. In contrast, unsuccessful people interpret failure as a sign to stop, um, question their motives, or spend time preparing and planning. We've all heard the phrase paralysis by analysis. I'm sure you've heard that in the trading. It's a common phrase you hear in trading. And uh, there's, oh, there's always an excuse. There's always an excuse. The, the question is getting past that excuse. So most traders don't just begin with brilliant trading ideas and strategies. You just don't walk in one day and you got a brilliant trading idea and strategy. It really comes, uh, you really discover those through, through your all the collective trading experiences. And this really gets to the heart of what this workshop's about. If you choose to attend, each of you will absorb and implement what's taught uh, differently. Everybody's going to learn differently, but uniquely in a way that will help you develop and refine your trading edge. My role in the workshop, I'm going to have a couple sessions where I'm going to explore some new things uh, that I've been doing with the footprint, things I've never publicly discussed uh, as of this time. So I'm going to uh, roll those out um, and go through those. But I'm also going to play a supportive role with the other speakers um, and contribute in those sessions as needed. 
So as I wrap up, I want to reiterate one of the core themes uh, of the workshop, which is peak performance. Dr. Steinbarger interviewed me um, in a section of his book, The Daily Trading Coach. And in it, uh, he explained, or I explained, how placing myself in the right environment was one of the best, was one of the keys to my success as a trader and entrepreneur. I pushed my limits, it accelerated my learning curve uh, through interacting with others and learning both from their wins and their losses. And that really, that really impacted me as a trader. Don't underestimate how much you can learn from someone else's mistakes. I personally, I don't believe you can reach peak performance unless you involve others in that process. They learn from you and you're going to learn from them. Um, trading's an isolated, it, we tend to isolate ourselves in trading. We don't want to talk about our losses and then just our geographic locations are off, often isolated. But we must be proactive to reach out and make the most of every opportunity. And that's really what this workshop's about. It's about providing that opportunity to, to grow. So, um, Anyway, I want to introduce our next speaker, which is Dr. Uh, Brett Steinbarger. He's going to share a few points on what he's going to bring to the workshop, Chicago Trading Workshop. A quick little background. I've personally known Brett longer than I've known actually any of the other speakers. He was working uh, at a uh, Chicago prop trading firm when I first met him. And since then, he's literally been around the world consulting hedge funds, traders, prop firms. He's a top blogger. Um, he's just a great a great person to learn from. He brings a unique set of experiences and perspectives to the workshop and I can guarantee you just through my just how, how I know him uh, he's gonna spur your thinking and he's gonna leave you energized. So one last thing with uh, if you haven't ever checked his books out do so look them up on Amazon they're all very good and I'm sure uh, it's something that you'll you enjoy. So without further ado, let me hand off the mic to Brett. Brett, are you there? Okay. Thank you very much, Trevor. I really appreciate it, and I appreciate all of you attending. I've got uh, about a, a little less than 10 minutes here, and in this time, I want to present two powerful ideas, and I want to just briefly summarize the that I'll be going over in the uh, Chicago. Uh, there are really two applications of psychology to trading. The first deals with the psychology of the trader, and less appreciated deals with the psychology of the market itself. In the Chicago sessions, I'll be addressing both. We'll be doing some group coaching, which will be highly technique focused. We'll be discussing in a group setting the specific psychological challenges each person faces. And I'll be describing specific research-based psychological techniques for addressing those. So it will be very hands-on how to focused on the problems and challenges that participants are bringing. The second part of what I'll be doing in Chicago is going over illustrating ways of assessing the psychology of the marketplace. How can we figure out from moment to moment if participants are leaning bullish, bearish, and how can we figure out how that might or might not influence forward price movement. So let's get to those two ideas I wanted to present today. One of the things in working with traders that I find myself encountering is the, are the triggers for specific poor trading patterns. In other words, people have different ways of veering from good trading practice. When I end up focusing on it are the triggers. What has set this off? What leads good traders to trade poorly? There are four big classes of triggers. The first is eagerness and overconfidence. We get too excited 
And out of our excitement and out of our overconfidence, we can make poor decisions. The second class of triggers are frustration and anger. We try to accomplish something in the market. It doesn't work. It seems like the market is thwarting our efforts. We become frustrated. We become angry. And we become reactive in our decision making out of that frustration. The third set of triggers relate to anxiety and uncertainty. We become confused. We become uncertain. Things aren't doing what we expect. And out of that anxiety and out of that uncertainty, we can end up becoming frozen. We can fail to pursue opportunities that in reality are in front of us. And finally, the fourth set of triggers relate to negativity and depression. When people become discouraged, they become negative, they shut down. There's actual research on how people's perceptual fields expand when they are more optimistic. When they're more pessimistic, we become more tunnel visioned. And that leads to poor decision making. So we have overeagerness, frustration, anxiety, negativity, and for different traders, different triggers will appear at various times of the marketplace. And you one or two of these that tend to repeat to interrupt the good trading of a trader. Now, here's the big idea. Let's assume that you are rational human beings. Let's assume that you don't go through your whole life having problems of over-eagerness, frustration, anxiety, and negativity. These are showing up more uniquely in trading situations. As a rational human being, why would you be having these seemingly irrational responses? What if we made the assumption that these reactions are themselves triggered by changes in the marketplace? What if something in the market is changing that is leading us to become frustrated or leading us to become anxious or leading us to become overconfident? The big idea is that shifts in our emotional state that could trigger poor trading are actually information signals about something changing, something different in the market. What if you, as a trader, every time you started to feel uncertain, anxious, angry, you stood back and said, ah, this is a sign maybe something has changed in the market. I better look deeper. I better look again. You're using your emotional reaction as information, not as a problem. What that accomplishes is that you become problem focused rather than emotion focused. You now step apart, step back from your emotional reaction and look at the market through fresh eyes. Much of trading psychology talks about ways of getting rid of negative emotions and trying to dispel them and move beyond them. But the big idea is to use those negative triggers as information that can clue you to important things happening in the markets. And we'll be talking more about that in Chicago. The second part, the, the second part is that there are a number of tools that we have for assessing the psychology of the marketplace. The first one is market profile. Market profile shows us how volume is behaving at key price levels. Look at where the market is established now. Look at how volume is transacted in and around that value area. Are we 
accepting or rejecting value. That tells you something about the intentions of market participants. The second tool for assessing market psychology are upticks, downticks. Those of you who read my trade or feed blog know that I read often about the NYSE tick, which is the number of upticks and downticks among all New York Stock Exchange. So when we see more upticking than downticking, we know that buyers are being more aggressive. A third tool for assessing market psychology is the market delta footprint. Now, whereas the upticks downticks are looking at transactions across all stocks, is assessing the transactions within a particular instrument, such as the S&P futures. Looking at every transaction in the future contract, and is that occurring at a bid price, which means that sellers are more aggressive, or at an offer price, which means the buyers are the aggressors. And we can accumulate that information to get a sense of whether buyers or sellers are dominating over time, and when there are shifts from buying to selling. And finally, the fourth tool is what I call event flow. And those of you who go to my Trader Feed blog today will see a post illustrating event flow. What we're doing is slicing volume very thinly and looking within each volume slice at how price is behaving. And we can see in each slice, are buyers more dominant or sellers more dominant? How does price behave? during that volume slice. And we add one volume slice to another, to another, to another, and we get a sense for whether buyers or sellers are dominating, whether they're growing, waxing, or whether they're waning. These are four different lenses which we can view market psychology. And the participation of traders in the market. It's just like reading tells around the poker table. The big idea I want to share with you is that it's not just the buying and selling of market participants that's important, but the relationship between buying and selling and the actual behavior of price itself. At important market turning points, we will see buying, 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 failing to move price significantly higher. At important downside turning points, we will see selling, 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 unable to push price or keep price. I refer to this phenomenon as inefficiency. The buying and the selling pressure can become inefficient. They are no longer in place as they had earlier. The inability of buyers to move markets higher, sellers to move markets lower, is a phenomenal tell that the buyers and sellers can get it done. And when we see buying and selling drawing up, and when we see other markets come in, those buyers and sellers couldn't get it done, are going to have to cover. That creates great short-term trading opportunities. So we have two big ideas. I'll be going over those in detail in Chicago and look forward to seeing some of you there. Great. Thanks, Brett. And I know some of you guys, the audio um, wasn't coming through very good, so hopefully the recording, which we'll send out tomorrow, will um, have... Uh, We'll represent that a little better, but come to the event. You'll have uh, hours of all that stuff. So um, anyway, I want to thank, thanks again, Brett, for that. I want to introduce our next speaker, which is Anthony Drager. Many of you guys probably know him from the trading room and the Market Delta Edge, but for those of you who don't, let me just provide a quick background. Anthony, uh, he runs all of MD's in-house, Market Delta's in-house education. 
Um, said in other ways, he's, a, he's our footprint chart expert with real trading experience. He works with traders uh, every single day, helping them get more out of the, the footprint and, and uh, trading. So uh, his professional background, he's a member of the CBOT, and he's been, he's been a professional trader for all, for all of his adult life. Um, and I, I got to know him a little over 10 years ago while he was working at a prop firm. Um, and that's really served as a basis of why we're working together uh, even to this day. So without further ado, let me hand it over to Anthony. Anthony? Hi, Trevor. Thanks. Everybody hear me okay? Sound a little bit better with me? Sounds good. All right, thanks. So I wanted to start my presentation with a story that just happened last Friday. So if you guys could stay with me a second, I'll walk through this story and then give you a, a little detail, but not too much detail, just kind of an understanding what you're going to get from my side of this workshop. So I grew up with this guy. I've known him forever. He's not a trader. We were out for drinks on Friday. He's been a pretty successful guy uh, in sales. So he's sought after by this company, and he's in an interview. Now, he's explaining to me this interview, and he says, I always want to ask two important questions. We were talking anything about trading. We were just talking about his interview. And he says, I always ask these two questions. What makes your people successful and will I have access to them? When he said that, it totally dawned on me that that's what the EDGE program is that I created a couple years ago because it does that for each of its members. For me, going back to my start, I learned, fortunately, I was blessed to learn the right way, the first way. Most traders don't have access to that, quote, right way these days. They usually go the wrong way first if they ever find the right path. They don't know what prop firms are, but you have to, I'm not going to get into exactly what a real proprietary firm is, but essentially proprietary firms employ professional traders. So what some of you might be and many of you want to be, you find at a prop firm. It's the venue of professional traders. It's like you want to be a baseball player. But if you don't know the New York Yankees exist and Yankee Stadium exists, you're kind of like, how are you going to be a baseball player? So when you're a professional trader, and again, I'm not advocating you guys go out and get hired by a prop firm at all, but at some point you need access to traders that have that background. So I created The Edge, and it does what a good community does. It's a unique program out there because part of it is every week we have a meeting as if you were in a trading office. If um, you also have access to each other in these daily virtual trading rooms. So think about it. If it was a mediocre program, do you think I'd want to see you every week? Do you think I'd want to introduce you to other people that invested into this club or into this membership? So I'm explaining this program a little bit because this Chicago workshop that we have in late July is just another piece to this puzzle. So I didn't, by the way, I didn't invent the concepts of professional trading techniques. I'm just going to convey them at this workshop and share what I learned from a myriad of traders in a prop environment. And I didn't learn from one guy. Maybe learned more from the owner than some of the other traders. But we had impromptu meetings. We had lunchroom conversations, desk-to-desk -desk banter, things that sometimes you learn when you weren't expecting to learn, but you learn from everyone. I got to tell this other story. It wasn't included in this presentation. We used to sit around just the equity futures traders, a, a round table. And it was just guys who traded FTSE, DAX, Euro stocks, futures at that point were the only game in town you could trade electronically. And so there was about a dozen of us. And we'd all have our, our printouts of our trades. And we would just review the streaks, the green or red streaks. What does that mean? Well, three or four winners in a row or three or four losers in a row, just summarize what you were thinking in those periods, right? So I can remember one day specifically, we were all green. We all had good to great days, except one guy, Paul. I won't say his last name. Paul usually was the weakest trader, and he had a red day. And what dawned on me is Paul would always defend what he was doing. And we're like, Paul, do you realize there's 12 of us, and we've all had huge days, and you lost during the same market, and you're defending your decisions? So I learned how powerful the mind could be, especially when it's negative, and how it just justifies poor behavior. But in this workshop, it just creates more access to another piece of that prop trading. 
from guys like Dr. Steenbarger, who you just heard, who's been with many prop groups in Chicago on the East Coast, is with a big one in New York. I've been with ITG, which was a prop firm in the northern suburbs. Dr. Kepler has presented to many prop firms around the world. And you got Trevor, who created software that most prop guys use, right? So you start to see a reoccurring theme. What you want to do in this event is separate yourself from the indicator seekers that are out there, the people who go out and buy systems. You know, it's fine to start your journey where you might think an indicator was the right way to go because you don't know what you don't know. But you can't continue on that path. Lazy people don't get their butts on a plane and take a step like this to be with like-minded, hungry traders. And that's who you're putting yourself around. So you want to put yourself in a position with the opportunity to collaborate. One of the guys in the room, and I think he's here, George, George H. told me, and I'll remember this for a long time. He says, listen, what you put together, he's an edge member, and he says, what you put together is an environment in which we not only can collaborate, but we have the trust to collaborate. And many of the edge guys uh, are making the trip. So it's really you know, nice to, to be able to see them and, and have what becomes very powerful, and that's face-to-face. -face. The roster is very powerful with the four of us that are going to, going to be there addressing the main weaknesses traders have. And I know what your weaknesses are. I don't have to do a survey. I don't have to ask. And I know because I know that they're my weaknesses if I'm not trading well, and that's executing well. The difference becomes successful traders know how to execute, but those who have never had consistent profitability, they've never learned how to execute properly. One major problem, for instance, with profiling is while it gives you a great opinion for market direction, it's not great on when to trade that opinion. It gives you a good bias, but when do I trade that bias? So you should always be working on execution, which is pulling the trigger. I call it when moments. I tell people, forget about where the market's going. Who cares where price is going? I want to know when. You make your money and your opportunity with knowing when a move is about to happen or when you're wrong. So on part of this event, for me specifically, I'm going to, I'm going to re reverse engineer is what I'm calling it. So I'm not only going to show you some better locations for profile setups, so you're in before many of the herd of other profile experts and profile traders, but we're going to take some of the great profile setups that Dr. Kepler will have and say, you know what, that's great. There might be a lot of great profile traders that are bullish, good for them, but where are they wrong? Where are their stops? And are those stops obvious? I'll show, I'll show you some obvious stops for profile setups that we could reverse engineer some of those setups and find where others might be getting themselves trapped. And do that with other setups that show you location is you're getting in where others are about to puke and get out. I got to add this. What makes you think you're so special? Do you ever think about this? When you think of buying a market at two, that you're going to be so special that people are going to come in after you and buy it at three, four, five, and six so that you could happily sell it at seven. What makes you so special is finding locations where people have to cover short positions and they're buyers who are emotional and they have to chase after you get long at two, they're reaching to buy three, four, five, and six. So where others are getting out is your opportunity to get in and that is using the footprint to highlight those good locations. I want to leave though my presentation with a little bit of content, just a couple of lines of content. Uh, because I'm going to teach using the footprint for location and execution at this workshop. I'm going to teach how to take patterns and trade them with proper stops and timing and all that good stuff with order flow techniques. Thin spots, as I call them, uh, is, is another element to trading and finding good areas. I'm going to introduce, which I just created, I believe the best visual for support resistance levels, and I'm going to release it at this event in late July. So all that stuff is going to be specifically covered in the event, but I'm going to leave you today with this. If there's an obvious exit to stop yourself out of a losing trade, then don't take the trade in the first place. Because if it's obvious for you as a place to stop yourself out, then it's probably obvious for most of the rest of the world. 
anywhere there's a lot of stops collected in one particular small area, they're going to get run and you're going to get stopped out along with all the rest of them. Let me repeat that. If there's an obvious exit to stop yourself out of a losing trade, you probably don't want to take the trade. Those are the trades you're confident in, but they're the ones you probably shouldn't take in the first place. Too many stops in one area is like a magnet, and I'm going to cover specifically why at the event. So you want to stop being the prey and start hunting for these stops like a predator. We eat what we kill is what I remember one of our prop guys saying. We eat what we kill, and it kind of gave us more encouragement to go out there and be that predator. So you need to understand where you can find some of the secret stops. And I don't want to try to sound mysterious, but secret stops are ones that just aren't obvious. So a fifth grader is not going to be able to see them. The rest of the retail world that didn't come to an event like this is not going to be able to see them. Let them put their stops there. Find better trade locations using unpopular stop locations. That's a little bit of content I want to leave you with in my presentation because it's time to re-engineer those trades and understand how to get out before you get in. Another line I always will remember from my trading education days in the, in the pit when I was, uh, uh, before I was a pit trader, he said, first day, I'm going to tell you guys this, and if you stay in this industry, you'll never forget it. Know where you're going to get out before you get in, and it helps with your execution and about being wrong. One thing I want to add, and I'm going to send it over to Dr. Kepler, is while many of these guys are experts, and that's good, and, and they're, they're smarter than I am with the industry and everything else, all I'm an expert at is being wrong. I'm good at being wrong. And I think every professional trader is. If you're not good at being wrong, which is hard to do, you're not going to be good at being a trader. So I really hope you guys come. Many of the edge guys are already coming, which is important to me because they're like friends of mine that I've never really met or seen. There are guys that have lifelong relationships because of this edge community, which is priceless to have people going on vacations with each other and doing things they never would have been able to do had it not been for this concept of community. So with that, I want to send it to Dr. John, who is, as many of you guys know, one of the top, I want to say top two or three volume and market profile experts in the world. He's written a nice book. He's got um, a lot of content we're going to talk about. Some of it we're giving away to attendees. But with that, I don't, I mean, you're going to see his bio in a second. And he is, um, like I said, one of the top profile guys in the industry for a reason. So we got to unmute John's mic and make sure we could hear him. And then we'll send it to him. John, you there? Good afternoon, everyone. I hope uh, you can hear me clearly. You sound good. Excellent. All right. Well, uh, let me follow up on uh, some of the things that my good friend Anthony here has been uh, talking about. Um, I am going to basically focus on the market profile and the wealth of information that it provides. The market profile is by far one of the most powerful analytical tools available today if not the most powerful tool available. If a trader is not integrating some of the key information that comes from the profile into their trading plan, they are really at a tremendous disadvantage because the edge that the profile provides is just incredible. Now, any wise trading decision depends on information. And where else would you find the kind of information that comes to you from actual market data and actual market activity detailed, tick by tick, other than really taking a look at the profile? So the nature of the information that we're going to look at is just phenomenal in terms of, uh, first of all, its accuracy, its potency, and its relevance to whatever decision I am going to make vis-a-vis -vis my trading. Now, one of the key things that any prudent trader wants to know is, am I on the right side of the market or not? And using the profile, we can actually determine that to a very high degree of certainty. 
and I will work with you to demonstrate that. Not only will I demonstrate it, I will give you certain exercises that we will work on together to whereby I want you to develop that same skill by the end of the workshop. You will be able to tell me, am I on the right side of the market, where momentum is, or am I trading against the market? Now, it's possible to also trade against the momentum of the market, and you may capture some profit, but at least you need to know what you're doing. And that will help you in being able to set reasonable targets for what you're going to do. If you are, in fact, moving with momentum, your targets are going to be very different from if you're taking a retrace against momentum. And that's a very important distinction. Now, in addition to being able to um, manage our profits and select reasonable targets, one of the other key hallmarks of a successful trader is risk management and being able to identify where is that point that if, in fact, price moves to, I know that my hypothesis or um, whatever decision I'm making may, in fact, be the wrong decision. And it may not necessarily have been wrong at the time you made it, but markets are very fluid. Conditions continually change, and we must always be able to identify that point, uh, the inflection point, where, in fact, the hypothesis of your decision is now inaccurate and you must exit. That is a, another one key decision of peak performers. Where is that uh, crucial exit point? And that's another element that we're going to focus on in our discussion in the workshop. And once again, um, I want to work with the participants in having them be able ultimately to identify that uh, for their own uh, selves. Um, it is always a pleasure to work with uh, other peers, and we have some distinguished ones that, we're go uh, that are going to be uh, joining this uh, workshop, and I'm certainly looking forward to meeting all the participants that will be with us. Without further ado, I will turn the mic back to Trevor. All right, thanks, John. Actually, I'm going to turn it over to Anthony. Anthony? I'm still here. We're going to wrap it up and just got, give you guys got some questions about what you get with this event and some other details because it's kind of done in two parts. If you do the second part, which is the advanced content all three days, you're going to also get these things. You're going to get Dr. Kepler, who just spoke, his profile trading strategies and tw his 12-module course, which is 1250 on his website. You're going to get that for free. You're going to get this footprint deep dive video course which is going to go out for about 550 at the end of the summer, but you're going to get that as part of your advanced um, ticket. And then two months to my room, and it's about $99 a month. So you'll have some access to me after the event. So you guys could then obviously cement the concepts that you had in a real-time environment with charts and everything else that's, that's up. So that's the bonus content. We're going to go to the next slide to break these things down, primer and advance. What's the difference? Very simple, primer is just the first day, you have a cocktail reception, it's only $500, get all the trader networking and everything else that you're gonna meet in day one. You're obviously not allowed in day two or three. We're gonna have a bouncer there at the door. But for the advanced guys, obviously get all three days, cocktail reception, which will be Monday after the Monday session, and we're going to have live entertainment, open bar for a couple hours. You're going to get all that free bonus content I just covered, which is around $2,000 of that. And obviously more time to learn and network and establish relationships. I think that's really important. So, again, the prices on this, the date that's important is this Saturday, June 17th. The promo code is early bird, all small caps. Trevor's going to pop in the link to pay for it. If you put in early bird, it goes from $24.50 to $19.50. Again, that's the advanced uh, side of things. So you get all three days and all that content I just spoke about. It goes to $24.50 after Saturday. Again, if you just want day one, usually that might just be for local guys that want to check it out. That's $500. Dr. Brett will be doing one of his sessions in day one, so you'll get 
um, you'll get a little bit of his content. And then who knows, you might want to stay for the next two days. But the advance gets you all three days, 1950. But before this Saturday. So you could take everything else. I'm not here to sell anybody on this event. I'm just here to share with you that you don't have to do something like this. You don't have to do something like the Edge course that we have. But you have to do something like it. Not only to stay successful, but for a lot of guys to get successful. Invest in yourself. Pat yourself on the back. One of the first things I'll say to the, to the group when I introduce them is, don't thank me. You're going to like this content. Don't thank me. I love appreciation more than anyone. That's great. Who doesn't? Thank yourself for coming to an event where you, you, you put yourself in a, in a different place. And, and remember one thing. What's going to give you the best chance to get and stay, stay successful? That's when there's value. And so put yourself around like-minded people. Like I said in my presentation, there'll be no lazy people there. In fact, 99% of everyone that's done my Edge course in two years have been very successful at something else. Really professional guys. That's who you want to be around. So I think that's about it. We've got some questions that I'm going to cover if Trevor hasn't already. So let me pull the question pane over here and go over some of them. So be patient. Again, some of the recording was in and out, especially towards the end of Dr. Steenbarger's presentation. Hopefully, it'll be better on the recording, and that's going to be sent out tomorrow if you want to review some of what he said, what I said, what Dr. John said, or what Trevor said. So this is important. The start and end times for each day are going to be roughly 9 to 4 p.m. Chicago time, Central time. So that's a good question, Clayton, because it's an important um, for scheduling flights and everything. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. You'll be out of there 4 p.m. Central time on Wednesday afternoon. Here's a good question from Robert. He's asking, do I need to bring a laptop with the Market Delta platform? And, and the answer is absolutely not. Um, this isn't um, a workshop where we're really going to be going through the software. Um, however, you can certainly bring it. There's uh, free Wi-Fi and power at every desk. So you're more than welcome to bring a computer and uh, be logged on and um, following the markets um, or, or using it however you want. But it's certainly not necessary. Yeah, whatever you're comfortable with. What's, what's really neat about this venue is it's not a hotel banquet room, which would be fine to do an event. But this is really built towards a presentation like this. Uh, you're going to absorb a lot more. The projection screens are big. There's three of them. Each person has their own like workstation. And um, there's pictures of this venue and many of the emails that we sent out. But it's the right way to do an event like this. You know, do a banquet hall, and that's fine. But if you start to get more than 20, 30 people, there is a bad seat. There's not a bad seat in this arena. And that's kind of what it looks like, where you have you know, elevated seating, everyone's got their own power stations and everything else. Let me look at what else we have. Someone asked what hotel I'm staying at. We tell you, but we don't want the paparazzi to find out. We want to keep that to a minimum. Again, we're going to send the recording of this thing out tomorrow if you guys want to review any of it. One thing I want to make sure you're going to have to, um, don't hesitate to call if you guys want to talk about any more questions you have you didn't think of in this event. Call us. The Trevor will pop in the number that you guys could reach us. Obviously, you could email sales at marketdelta.com with any questions. I never hesitate to talk to anyone that's serious about trading. Even if they don't end up coming to the event, call in if you got questions about it that you couldn't think of in this event. So what we do, Kelly, this is a good question. Will attending the advanced attendee, will, well, will attending as an advanced attendee provide any access to future software-based workshops or training? We always have made customers that are part of our network or part of our community accessing new ideas and new releases first. 
that's so much I could tell you. So without understanding too many of the details of what you're asking within that question. Yeah, most of our software training is all done in a, a webinar just like this, and those are free to um, subscribers, so you would have access to those. We do not charge. Uh, we don't really have live events for the software where we would charge. So, Yes, another question from John. If um, someone does a 500, decides they want to stay the next two days, there will be an arrangement to be able to um, have you pay for those next two days. Yeah, so that's a, that is a good question because even if you, you're not sure about all this and you want to attend day one, uh, you can always upgrade to days two and three if you really enjoyed day one. I mean, we're not, that's fine. As long as we've got the, the seats, we're more than happy to accommodate that. And if you live local or in the general Chicagoland area, that, that might be a good With any decision that you guys make, the, the first thing that comes to mind is, the risk of doing it, which is always the monetary number and the time spent. But you have to look at things as the risk of not doing it. And sometimes there's more risk in not doing something than doing something. People look at numbers like this, not you guys necessarily because you come to this event, but there'll be people listening to this on recording and say, well, that's expensive. But they think nothing of losing five grand or 10 grand in their account and donate to the markets and never learn anything. So there is no... There is nothing that's professional that comes for absolutely free YouTube videos and, and, and things like that. I was on a 50-50 split for three years and a 75-25 split for the next four years of my career. So nothing is free, and this is inexpensive, especially when you compare it to the amount of money in this industry, the amount of money that's lost in ill-advised trades because of the randomness that otherwise exists. So you gotta you gotta keep it relative to it's not a pair of you're not paying nineteen fifty for a pair of socks. Do you see any other questions? Trevor? I'm looking up no, and down here. No, I, I I think we've answered most of them. I was responding to a lot of people. The the Gleacher Center is in the heart of downtown. It's right from a proximity standpoint, right on the river. Michigan um, Avenue and the river. Yeah, Michigan Avenue, which is a magnificent mile. The hotel that you'll, um, we have rooms blocked out, and a rate is a four-minute walk. Well, it's not the only hotel you could stay. You could stay anywhere you want. That's the one that most of us are staying at. Some of the early people that have already signed up for are staying mostly at that hotel. So that's your best bet. And as we get closer to the event, you'll get another couple emails just to make sure everyone's on the same page. 